is like if you watch, I was watching um, Bad Boys 2 and that whole sequence uh, in the highway when the cars are falling on top of them and you, you just have no idea. There's no reference point of where you are in, in the movie. But it yeah, works. I'm completely confused. But it works for whatever reason. Normally you would like, you have to set the establishing shot so the audience understands what's going on. You, all of a sudden you see, you see a tire, you see a car, you see a face, you see a gun. It, it's, and I guess we just kind of connect it. What's your feeling on that? Well, I mean, I think there's a difference between The Rock and like a Transformer movie oh, no, where yeah, I, yeah. I just don't know where I am. <laughs> I don't know why I'm looking at this person. I don't know if they're looking at each other. Right, right. What yeah. he just said, anybody yeah. can hear. Yeah. I'm just utterly confused. And it's just sort of then the, the action just like rolls over me. Right. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm not as engaged as when I watch Mad Max, where like the oh, eye tracing is God. just perfect. Oh, man, and I'm from so every familiar. cut, I know exactly who the villain is, where the motion is going from where to where. Um, and it's more efficient that way as well. I think Mad Max is actually cut way faster than any Transformer movie, but it still works because somebody has an eye exactly on where where's the the audience looking at each frame and when we make the cut that we make sure that the eyes are still in that same spot of the frame mm -hmm. and they don't have to reorient themselves. They don't have to figure out like the, the 180 where we are in, in the, in the scene, <laughs> what? all these things that you have to do in transformers. If you want to figure out what's going on. But and, if, if you study, look, if you go, if you watch transformers one, And yes. then you watch the last Transformers. Oh my God, it's like night and day, like changing. Of the, it, it, he's gotten, I feel he's gotten a little bit more drunk on his power. So he yes. can kind of go as, and he just does what, because every time he puts something out, it just makes a billion dollars and he doesn't care. Yes. Um, but I think. And have you seen how many editors he has? Oh, he, he goes through like, them like five or six editors working on, on this movie at the same time. <laughs> They're just throwing stuff on the timeline. To see and then what he happens. Watches it. And so by the time they're done, they have no, like, it, to me, it feels like they, they don't even, there's no, nothing that they can, like, hold on to in terms of plan to edit the scene. It all just, it's just a, a and there's no, no ownership in there. Yeah. Which, I mean, it just from watching one. E video where i see him talking to his editors and they're all on notepads trying to figure out what the hell they're gonna do with the scene now after he watched it um I, i think i saw that video too and i was watching it too i was like jesus this is insane it isn't it's insane this is his process though but like but that but i think mad max is a perfect uh, example of a movie that is extremely chaotic And extremely crazy. You got visuals coming at you at a mile a minute. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it's not as exhausting as well. Like I stopped watching the Transformers movie. Like I think I stopped at three. I was like, I can't even, yeah. I can't even watch this. I just can't uh, because it's it, it's just exa visually exhausting. Like I would, I can only imagine trying to watch it in a theater. You would just be like, oh, it would just be too much. Yeah. But but Mad Max, man. I mean, I mean, the reason is Margaret Sixel who cut the film. Right. She, I mean, she's the wife of the director, which George Miller, I think. Yeah, George Miller. Yeah. And and she, they just he trusts her to do the right thing, and she has a sensitivity towards action that is I I don't see any other editor that were able would have been able to cut this movie this way because she really I mean she went through the entire footage it took her three months to just go through the footage select everything It's a lot of cameras and, <laughs> and just I mean they manipulated every shot there's there's hardly any shot that's running at true 24 frames a second oh no they there. sped up they speed up they, they speed up they oh. slow-mo oh. if they feel like it's lacking they do something to make sure it holds up And the eye tracking is perfect, the center framing, mm -hmm. and the entire movement throughout the film, like from the beginning to the end, the way that the action moves at the beginning from left to right, at some point they turn around and they go right to left and then they go right again. It's basically, basically three movements in this film in terms of the action. 
And yeah, you're right. this is this is all by design. This is a director who has a vision, who storyboarded this whole thing through, oh. and and an editor that just completely is on board and is a strong collaborator that can uh, just support this vision 100%. 